So hi, I'm Adrian Ramsey from Adrian Ramsey Design House, and today I've got this really special guest that I'm going to talk to. This is Chris. He's a consultant and knows everything that you would want to know about tiles, carpet, and flooring in general. Um, he's got years and years of industry experience, and he's my go-to guy. So. What keeps you in it? What makes it so exciting? What's the thing that drives you to get up and do this for people? It's just nice to work with talented people. And I find that is what I get most satisfaction out of. I'm lucky because we're not a retail showroom. We don't have to be you know, trying to appeal to the masses. We're here for designers, for architects. They can tell me what they want and then I can give them the products that will help them achieve that. And I find that is what I get most satisfaction out of because mm -hmm. you learn so much and have the same kind of passion to create beautiful spaces. In the last 15 years, you would have seen a shift, but not only what is available, what's happening in technology. I think the, the changes have been from that yeah. technology and as it improves, right. being able to take a photo at a piece of stone and make that sure. look realistic mm -hmm in a man-made way, and they're just getting bigger and bigger. So the format, the, you mean? You got like the, the bigger format product. The carpet, you know, back in the day, really the only thing that felt good was wool. Yes. These days you've got synthetic carpets that feel as soft as cuddling a teddy bear. Right. What about with, um, say, timber floors or something like that? Well, the engineered product is very clever. I don't think it'll ever replace a, a good solid piece of wood. Well, it's made something like, say, oak accessible yes. to more people. And it sure. also has stabilised it in climates like ours, which have high levels of humidity and yeah. where a solid piece of timber isn't as stable essentially as an engineered piece. Probably, so it is yes. about choosing the right product for the right environment. Um, if you go back to tiles and you were saying about these large formats, if you're creating this dream home, what are some of the do's and don'ts on the size of format, where you might use it? how you might lay it, what you've got to watch out for, yeah, what are the things sure. that they look out for. Well, these days you'll find large format, that meaning has changed. Ten by years ago, to large by format was a 600 by 600. <laughs> True. Now Whereas that's a these standard days, format. large format isn't even a 1200 by 600. You can consider like the 3.2 by 1.6 meter. Yeah. It all comes down to then how you use that product, um, yep. what you're using it for as to the specific size it needs to be. Um, in a small room, a large tile can make that room feel quite spacious. You're taking lines, away the busyness of the line. It's better for maintenance. Yep. We love big tiles in bathrooms. In renovation, sometimes it's not an option to use a really big floor sure. tile yeah. because the falls are difficult to achieve. So the clients might use them just on the walls and mm -hmm. then drop it down to mm -hmm. a 600 by 600 on the floor. So in the planning, you've got to plan early if you really want to be able to use these large formats to their best effectiveness, even to the point where it's got to be able to get into the rooms. Somebody may be renovating an apartment, these large formats might not even fit in their lift. Even where is it going to get cut? That preparation is really important. If you don't have that, not only are you going to not be able to use the product, you will actually go through more yep. wastage yes. trying to use the product. Well, that's been awesome, man. I really appreciate it. I would like to thank you so much. Chris, thanks, thanks buddy. Adrian. Really appreciate Pleasure. it. Cheers, man.